Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk a little bit how the absolute value affects our equalities and our inequalities. Back in chapter one we talked about absolute value and we said that absolute value is the distance a number is away from zero. Now what happens when we put it in an equation or an inequality is that there are multiple numbers which are the same distance away. You would have two numbers that are both three away from zero and you would have two numbers that are both five away from zero. There is one particular case where a number only has one answer to an absolute value and that's zero itself. So if you were to say how far is zero away from zero? Well there's only one way to do that. It's right on it and it can't be left and right at the same time. What we're going to go over are the three sub goals you want to focus on when dealing with an absolute value in an equation or an inequality. First, what you're going to aim to do is you're going to get that absolute value all by itself on one side of the equal sign. Typically, we like to have our variables on the left, but in either case, it could be on the left or the right hand side. And for our first example right here, we can see that it's all alone. There's no plus or minus before or behind the absolute value, and there's no times or divide in front or behind the absolute value. Once you have that in place, you can go ahead and say, that what's inside the absolute value is equal to the positive case, so it could be equal to positive 4, or break it into the negative case where you say what's inside the absolute value is equal to the opposite or the negative 4. And what that communicates to us is that there are two numbers x which are 4 away from 0, that would be good old regular 4 and good old regular negative 4. However, sometimes the absolute value is not all alone. As we can see, there's this minus 5 behind it. So to take care of that, I would have to add 5 to both sides of my equation. Now my absolute value is all alone, and I have a 9. And so it's time to move on to our second sub goal. It's time to break it up into two situations. What was inside could be equal to positive 9, or what is inside could be equal to negative 9. And again, the reason why we break it up into two situations is because the absolute value is saying how far away is this number from zero. We could be positive 9, which is saying it could be 9 away to the right, or it could be negative 9. It could be 9 away to the left. So the reason why we're breaking our absolute value down into a positive and a negative case is because you can either be a distance to the right or that same distance to the left where our negative is taking care of that example to the left. Now here I've given you a few more examples to try on your own. So try to take those three sub skills and say let's get the absolute value alone. Once it's alone, let's break it up into two situations, the positive and the negative, and let's see if you can solve each situation separately. Right now, you guys should think about pausing the video, try it out on your own, so that way you can reap the full reward of seeing where possibly we made a mistake or gratifying ourselves and figuring out, yeah, we did it exactly the way we should. So pause the video, and I'll come back in a few seconds with the uh, explanations. Time to unpause. All right, let's go over some of these. So for our first example, we can see the absolute value is not by itself. There is this plus 4 that's next to it. So we're going to remove that by doing a minus 4 on both sides. And now our absolute value is all alone. It's the only thing on that side of the equal sign. So what if what was inside was equal to a positive 6? Or what if what was inside is equal to a negative 6? Here's our two situations. And in both situations, we're going to be subtracting 3 from both sides so that we get the x all alone. x could be positive 3 or x could be negative 9. And what's important to note here is that our answer isn't plus or minus the same number. Don't fall into that trap. It's not always going to work out that way. It's only true in the most simplest of cases. So this is an extra emphasis on making sure we actually solve both instances. Don't just solve one and go, oh yeah, negative the other one. It's not going to work out that way. Here, our absolute value is all alone. So I'm going to say, what if what was inside is equal to the positive 7? And running out of space, I'm going to write it down here. What if what was inside was equal to negative 7? Alright, we're going to subtract 5 away, so 2x will equal 2, 
and dividing by 2 is going to give us x could be a 1. Down here, we're going to take care of our negative case by subtracting 5, giving us that 2x is equal to negative 12, and dividing by 2, telling us that x could possibly be equal to negative 6 as well. Okay, in our third example for the equalities, again, the absolute value is by itself, so let's go ahead and just break it up. What if what was inside was equal to a minus 3? Ooh, this is kind of weird. In all our examples so far, it's always been equal to a positive number. We're going to need to backtrack a little bit here. It turns out that this case is actually impossible. And let's think about what I was saying before, that the absolute value is saying how far something is from zero. And distance is always a positive notion. And we can't start off by saying, hey, the absolute value is negative 3 away. We're talking about a positive distance, which is to the right or to the left. So this one is going to be no solution. And if you wanted to check yourself, just think about what would happen if you plugged in numbers. If I plugged in a number here, I would add 6 to it, and the absolute value would turn that automatically into a positive number. Well, a positive number cannot equal a negative number. So there isn't going to be any x that's going to make this work out for us. So that's one small exception to watch out for. If your absolute value from the get-go is equal to a negative, say no solution, because a positive number will never equal a negative number. Now that was just our equalities. There's one small change for inequalities, and that's when you're talking about the negative case. We're still going to take our absolute value expressions and we're going to split it into a positive inequality and split it into a negative inequality. But because of we're using multiplication in the background to create that negative case, multiplying or dividing by negative forces us to switch the sign around. And at a later date, we talked about how that happens. Now I want you guys to try and apply those three goals, so get the absolute value by itself, split it into the positive and negative case, but just remember now that we're dealing with inequalities, we're going to need to flip the sign when we do that negative case. I'll just pause here while you guys pause the video and try these on for yourself. Okay, time to work on these. So here we got our absolute value. And it is not alone. It's got that plus 1 there. So let's take care of that with a minus 1 on both sides. And here we go. Our absolute value is all alone. If I were to split it into the positive case, I would say x is less than positive 7. But when I break it into the negative case, I need to flip that inequality around. x could be greater than a negative 7. That's the one small thing to keep track of when you're working with inequalities, to flip the negative case around. Okay, our second one. So let's see. Here, we already have the absolute value alone, so time to split it. What if 2x plus 5 was greater than or equal to positive 7? The other case, 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to a negative 7. So I flipped it around because we're talking about the negative case. Same as before, you may remember this. The 2x could be greater than or equal to 2 and dividing by 2 would give us x is greater than or equal to 1 for our positive case. And again, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. 2x could be less than or equal to negative 12, and dividing by 2 would give us x is less than or equal to a negative 6. So in the next video, we're going to talk about graphing our inequalities. Here, we've just gone ahead and solved them, but when we opened up with our inequalities unit, right after we solved them, we graphed them. So watch the next video if you are curious on how these look on a number line.